Welcome to the Inbound Podcast, hosted by Jamie Midgley. The Inbound Podcast is dedicated to bringing you the latest strategies on HubSpot, inbound marketing, sales, and client service to help you go inbound and grow faster. Hi, and welcome back to this week's episode of the Inbound Podcast. And on today's episode, we're going to be uh, taking you through a 101 on personas and at a deep dive level two, so as you can create the ultimate persona template to so build your content strategy around. Inside our agency, this is the starting point of doing Inbound right. Today, I'm joined with Mike, who actually will be giving us a lot of pro tips uh, for each of the stages of actually building the persona. How's it going today, Mike? Excellent, Jamie, and uh, we're really at the crux of it. Even though we're early on in this podcast, uh, personas is where it starts. So if you're thinking about doing inbound, uh, this is an absolute must, uh, must, should I say. Even if you think, hey, I've got all my personas worked out, I think that we're going to teach you something today, we're going to show you a better way of doing it, and that's going to really ramp up your content strategy and get you better results. So stick around, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Before we do actually stick into the show, uh, I do just want to say that obviously uh, you can actually check us out on uh, on, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and also Spotify. And also, uh, if you go over to theinboundpodcast.com, and then obviously we've got all those episodes on there as well for video, and obviously for you audio listeners uh, as well. So, uh, for starters, before we do get started, uh, Mike, I actually know that uh, you have actually got an intro, uh, what actually we always do, and actually discuss, when actually we uh, do create the songs with actually clients. And I do just want to cover three main points on this yeah, podcast today. Sure. First one is, why do I need a fully understood persona? The second one is, is there a right or a wrong way to create personas, which uh, we all know that there is uh, in short, but I'll just going to deep dive into that more. And actually also, how many personas is too many personas? And should we update them? And if so, how often should we update them? So, so uh, let's actually dig into the first point, which is why do I need a fully understood persona? Yeah, it's great. And um, I think, again, if you go back to the launch session of this podcast, why we created it is the amount of times we get asked this five times a week, three times a week, whatever. And even when you sold inbound correctly, you know, you still get questions from other members of the C suite. Why are we doing it? Is this a waste of time or whatever? Um, so, why do I need a fully understood persona? I think was the first point that you mentioned today is that I want to sort of give you the sports analogy. Um, so, you're a football club, a baseball team, a basketball team, a swimming club, it doesn't really matter. Uh, for you guys who follow us on different social channels, you know we're big Evertonian fans, Everton fans based out of Liverpool in the UK. And there's a quite fierce rivalry in the city, Jason, the way obviously Liverpool uh, are the red side of uh, Stanley Park and where the blue side of Stanley Park. So if you were to try and target me with Liverpool merchandise, you're probably going to get a really negative response. Uh, I'll be rude to you, not literally, but technically I'll probably either ignore you, I'd certainly unsubscribe, and your targeting is way off. And the chance of you getting uh, any sale out of me for Liverpool Football Club merchandise is absolutely zero. zero. If I'd probably pay you not to sell me, it, 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 it's that sort of bad. So why do I use the sports analogy? Because it doesn't matter what sport that you're in, uh, being able to put the right message in front of the right audience at the right time is always going to get you a better result. So if you don't know who you are targeting, if you don't know who you are marketing to, then how can you put a well-crafted message that's going to convert? Um, I've never met a a CFO, a chief financial officer, a marketing manager, marketing director, CMO, CEO, who says, yeah, yeah, just waste my marketing budget and just get me as much reach as you can. Think about how you do Google Ads. What do you do? You target countries or you target regions, mm. uh, Facebook ads, lists, interests, because you want to get as close to that ideal person you think as possible. So why do you need to follow uh, understood persona so you can put, create content that's relevant, that's got a better chance of converting or engaging through to revenue in dollars, which is why we do this. Because if we didn't do all this for getting results in dollars, well, why are we doing it? So, better messaging to better audiences to get better engagement, better conversions. And naturally, doesn't it make sense that, you know, if I'm an Everton fan, market me with Everton Stadium Tours, Everton Legacy, Gary, all all this stuff like that. You're going to get my revenue than marketing with the wrong product. So, 
Ask yourself this question, shoot us a message, use the hashtag inbound podcast or go inbound. How many times have you been marketed for something that's totally relevant to you? You know? I used to know I have, so. Yeah, and did you buy it? Definitely not. No, so the cost of sending that out there, so the odd bit of uptake that you get um, from sales, you know, it's what we call spray and pray. It's like sticking a shotgun out the window, pulling the trigger a dozen times, and then having a look to see if you've shot a bird there. Doesn't it make sense, guys, to get a sniper rifle, put a scope on it, and pick your targets with the crosshairs? You're going to have a lot better conversion uh, rate right, using that analogy. So, um, if you if you don't have a fully understood persona, then you are, I guarantee you, you're wasting marketing. Is there a right or a wrong way to create a persona? Okay, uh, brilliant. Absolutely. It's like anything. Uh, what do you do for a living? Do you repair washing machines? Do you do corporate training? Do you manufacture something? Is there a right or a wrong way to do it? Absolutely. Do we have all the answers? I'd like to think we're pretty close as an inbound agency, but we learn every day. And we've been creating personas now since 2012. So this recording is in 2020, so eight and a half years uh, that we've been creating personas. We used to call them avatars. Yep. Now they're called personas. And when we started creating personas back in 2012, um, they were nowhere near what, what, where we are now. And like anything, the more you know, just because I'm an Everton fan, doesn't mean I'm going to buy everything mm-hmm. Merch does. What if I live in Singapore, and I, it's pointless marketing me home, home game tickets yeah. and stadium tours because mm-hmm. I can't get there can't quickly. Attend, obviously, most games. But live streaming services live-streaming. for Everton TV to watch the games live while I'm over in Singapore is a better fit. Whereas if I live on turf in L4, L4 is the zip code for where Everton is at David Goodison, um, you might be better targeting with stadium tours or um, uh, game game tickets. Yeah, home game tickets. So having them understood and doing them right. So if you've got a marketing manager or you are a marketing manager or a CMO or a CEO or whatever, and you say, yeah, yeah, we're just, you're quickly not, you know, formulating a persona. That's not a, an acceptable answer if you want to do this right. Just because you've got them doesn't necessarily mean it's right. We're going to show you the ultimate persona template today. We are. And what I would love you to do is, I know what you're probably thinking there, yeah, 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 you're an agency, you've got to say that. But let the proof be in the pudding. We're a data-driven business. Yeah. At the end of the podcast, whatever you're thinking now, stick around, go to theinboundpodcast.com, you know, pick, up this, pick this episode up. You can actually download a blank template and we're going to show you how to fill that in in this episode. But shoot me a message afterwards and say, hey, Mike, I was skeptical to start with. Now I saw the full finish because we're going to show you a fully developed persona. Um, I'm not a betting man and I'm going to be a little bit, uh, you know, <laughs> egotistical here. But one thing I will say is I guarantee your persona is not going to be as fully fleshed out as the how we produce them for you. And we're going to show you how you can do that yourself. So it's not a sales pitch. Yeah, sure, if you want to work with it, you can do But ultimately, we're going to show you how to do that and you'll be able to be so targeted with your messaging. It'll be off the clock. It'll be really good. Perfect. That's a, uh, that's a great point there as well. So obviously, uh, basically, uh, which will be put in all of the resources uh, from this podcast in actually uh, the actual show notes below. So just uh, stick around, go down and uh, download them. Uh, it actually will be an actionable template that you can take and actually use and then actually move your business forward as well. So uh, moving on to the next actual point, and it is kind of a two-part on Mike. Yeah. So obviously, uh, we're going to answer the first part first, which is how many personas is too many personas? If there is too many personas, uh, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, look, you can go berserk with this. And to do, one thing I will preempt you, to do a fully fledged persona to the level we're going to show you, you probably will have to spend between eight and 10 hours low side into it. Mm. Uh, the persona we're going to show you is probably at nearly 30 hours of development. To it. But you don't have to go as high as that to start with. That's over the course of a couple of years as, yeah, as well. So it's absolutely. not the only one there. Actually, that actually kind of does actually uh, takes into the next point of the question as well, which obviously we'll, uh, which is we'll get onto in a little bit. Yeah, and ultimately, um, I would recommend that you have a persona, two part answer for w- at least one for the key decision maker for every key service that you supply. Yep. Now, if you're a manufacturer who's got twenty eight thousand parts 
that you sell and skill codes. You're not gonna, we're not asking you to create 28,000 personas. Yeah. You've got to look and say, is that the buyer of fast moving consumer goods? Is that the CFO, the CEO, the marketing manager, the operations? Who is the main buyer for each of your services? Yeah. You've got six core services, five core services, then you need six yeah. or five personas for that keyword. If you're in a more high ticket business where you do ABM, account based management or ABS account based yeah. sales, where you target a company, but then you may have five decision makers in a row. So you might have, for example, the HR director, the chief financial officer, you may have the um, chief operating officer. So you might have to target three people in one account, then you'd have three for one account. But that just reverses out. So one, at least one for the key decision maker in every key major product service that you supply. So if you're a solicitor and you do family law, if you are a solicitor doing criminal law, if you're a solicitor doing corporate law, then you've got to look who is the buyer of corporate law. It's usually going to be the CEO of the business yeah. or the legal director. Who is the family buyer of the family law? It's going to be the husband or the wife yeah. or, or the estate pension for their family wills. So you've got to target those. And that also brings into another question, Jay, is could a persona be more than one person? The answer is no. If you're hitting man and wife, or, or husband and wife, or, or wife and wife, or husband and husband, doesn't matter, then they're two different people. Yeah, because they've both got two different, obviously, roles, obviously, uh, two different, obviously, points of view as well, yeah. so obviously, uh, obviously, both of them uh, might buy from a different place. And the way a woman buys is different to the way a man yeah. buys. And I just want to be clear, guys, that's not being sexist or anything like that, no. but women go through a different process. The type of language our copyright is used for women is slightly different than it is for men. Um, no, no right or wrong there. It's all on a level playing field. Uh, like it would be for children, you know, teenagers is going to be a different type of short, punchy copy than it is maybe for the over 65s who retired. That's going to be more visual and longer form. They want to really dig, dig deep in. So different age groups, different um, uh, genders have different copy styles and usually different products have it as well. If you're selling sexy products, you can glamorize that up more. If you're selling, I don't know, patent law, it's, oh, it's a bit harder and you know, it's not bit, the most exciting yeah. thing. It, it, necessary, but not the most exciting thing, probably. Nobody ever gets up in the morning and say, I can't wait to invest my hard earned money in patent law. Exactly. You know, <laughs> it, 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 it's there, but it's essential. So, very much a big shout out to all our patent lawyers and leads where we are based as well. So, they do a great job. Great on that first point, obviously, which was obviously how many percentages uh, too many, and obviously. There isn't really too many, but obviously, uh, I should, uh, try to keep it to the individuals to service that you do, and also uh, individual buyers who might buy them. Yeah, and if you wanted to get started, start which is your biggest product. If you've got a product or a service that's 40% of your revenue line, start there, start you that. know, and then get that right, and then you can work into the more peripheral sort of areas. Second part of that third yeah. question is, should we update personas? 100% yes. A persona is never done. Um, it's a little bit like going to the gym. You know, you go to the gym, you start working out, you see improvements in your health and your fitness, your body shape. What happens when you stop? You, you deteriorate. It's a, you know, Zig Ziglar is one of the great guys we, we study as the old American uh, motivator and philosopher. Zig used to say motivation is like bathing. You know, after a while it wears off and, you know, and, and ultimately. You so yeah, you need to do it every day. Now you don't have to be persona every day. No. But what I would recommend that you do is you get it right at whatever starting point that it is, um, and then you go out, test and measure, and then you know you learn. And then as you bring different type of clients on, and you interview those, we'll talk about how to build a persona in a moment, but then you add little pieces to it. It may just be a sentence. Yeah. It may be a regulation that's changed. Mm. Look back at what happened in 2018, uh, here in Europe, the, the, the GDPR. Uh, the way you could contact people in a certain industry had it changed. So it may be that your persona likes to receive information in a different way. Change Go and survey them, interview them, and change it updated. It may be that the a product reaches its maturity and is no more exciting, or a competitor comes in. Jay, we were talking about how PlayStation did its launch and the yes. PlayStation 5. And you will just talk us through how they launched that just quickly, and then I'll give an example around that. Exactly. So yeah. So obviously, what obviously they did it was uh, they to obviously it was in the the eleventh of June. Obviously, what their uh, launch was for obviously the PlayStation Five, and obviously there is obviously no uh, uh, nothing that obviously uh, we can't discuss on this. That obviously, they've already uh, publicly public out. But obviously, uh, what they did, uh, they actually extremely focused on more of the visual side. Visual side, obviously, what it kind of looks like. Uh, 
mainly because the people who was watching that type of stuff, the most visual learners, you won't see many people who obviously would buy a PlayStation 5 who aren't visual people. There's a reason that, you, uh, that obviously you play video games or you play that type of stuff. You do it obviously to be on a, well, it's on a screen, so obviously their persona for that one, obviously well, uh, they obviously have their personas down to a T because obviously I think they had uh, over 20,000 people on a stream at once on a live stream at 9 o'clock BST at night, so it's like quite a lot of people are ready to get to bed and all that type of stuff. 20,000 people. But yeah. Yes, yeah, so obviously what they did is uh, that the person was right on that stage just to make sure that they got the best out of it. And also they didn't go into all of the technical aspects that, that the majority of the people who actually buy the type of stuff are interested. Don't get me wrong, we have actually got like the 10 to 15% uh, minority of them who do care about every single tech spec. Yeah, because that, that's, that's not what it was about for them, was it? No, it wasn't. It was a launch party. It just wasn't the, uh, the uh, this is a technical breakdown of everything. It was a launch to say, this is what we've done. This is, this is how it looks, and actually, this is how good we look online. Now, what thing, I don't know if you picked up what Jay said there, and uh, what he said is he got the personas down to a team. They did a live stream out about the product launch, live and stream. the new PlayStation 5 has got now an option with no disc, so it could just be a digital-based digital disc. Can you see how the, the, they're using that medium now, not just like the Apple TV stuff and things like that, where they go out and put some on the stage? They'll still do that, but the focusing and mirroring, and the way that they launch this um, this uh, PlayStation 5, totally different Probably to the way that they have PlayStation 4, yeah. just purely because of the time. So they have had to update those personas. They've optimized. As their, their products changed, and, and as the world's changed, because obviously yeah, right now, live streaming, obviously, especially with everything that's going on right now, obviously numbers on some live streams, obviously some videos are at an all-time high. Uh, uh, so, so obviously what was uh, their best way to get all of their eyeballs of obviously their customers onto their product, due to something that every kid obviously yeah, nowadays are out live streaming. Every kid nowadays does in their spare time, watches live stream, watches videos. Yeah, so, for, so there's a question, should they be updated? Yes. Yeah. Not that they I think the question is not should they be updated. I think, and I know that's probably coming from one of the audiences that we've had a question put in through yeah. social. Um, but it's, they're never done. No. So it, class it as a version one with version two pending. So the, the, the rule is when do you update them? Here's a quick checker, some or all will apply when your product changes, mm. when the market moves, when the economy changes. You know, uh, uh, you know um, if a new competitor comes into the market aggressively, go and serve them again. So take your stats from your customer service scores, your customer service, get feedback in from your sales team, your customer service team, your retention teams, your manufacturing teams, your return teams. Why are they returning the product? Why are the refunds happening? That may mean that the product's wrong, the persona's wrong, you know, you're selling them, you know, I don't know, a high value ticket to a, a, a younger audience uh, and maybe they want a refund after a while. I don't know. But, so it's never done, should be updated. They should never be finished, I think is the better question. And we try and update ours at least twice a year, uh, but review every quarter. Of course, yeah. It's just to see obviously whether on the market or the economy, but it's like everything like that, just to make sure that we can obviously update it and just make sure that we are, uh, well, obviously that will say as most targeted to our ideal persona as possible. Yeah. So obviously uh, that was it for the three questions, Mike. So obviously awesome. uh, what we are going to uh, do now is we are going to uh, uh, down a bit deeper into the actual process of making one uh, persona, and then obviously uh, looking at the different stages that obviously we need to go through. Obviously, uh, as an agency, uh, we have to do this every single day, and obviously I'm going to quickly go into the section here, so obviously on the uh, TV here. Obviously what we can see is we've got six parts to a persona. We've got obviously uh, the about, so obviously, uh, what is it about like a personal of them, Water and holes. This is an interesting one. So obviously, uh, this is like where they hang out. And then obviously we've got a uh, business profile, so uh, where they're currently in business, because obviously uh, in the last episode, uh, we did actually touch on the types of businesses that obviously would uh, fit to inbound, exactly the same thing, what we need to make sure in the persona. Do, uh, does actually uh, their business fit with your company? Uh, in actually the alignment, the size, and everything like that. Four, obviously key questions. So obviously the key questions, obviously what you need to know as obviously company A, to then actually deal with either your customer or obviously your B2B, like, or whatever you deal with that. Number five is your solution. So obviously, how obviously your solution uh, kind of ties into them and if it's uh, even relevant to them, because uh, what we also did actually on the last podcast was, 
if obviously somebody doesn't match your persona or they don't match uh, your company, just because they've got the money doesn't mean to say that you should deal with them. <laughs> and then last but not least is uh, before and after. So obviously, I know just the way that I, and the, I know that Mike actually uses this a lot with obviously the uh, sales team, was how do, uh, how do they look before your product and how do they look after your product? So obviously that's before and after to see obviously the advantages and the benefits of obviously that product. So, yeah. so obviously first things first, let's go into the about section. We've called this one about Teddy because of uh, our main uh, something is called entrepreneur ready. And then Mike, so uh, what we've got is uh, underneath about Eddie, we've got a couple of different points. Uh, so you're just going to pick up a couple of the points. Obviously, guys, uh, you can see this uh, in actually the resources section below. Uh, so obviously, you can then actually look at this in uh, a lot more detail. So, so what I've got is uh, I'm actually just going to pick up a couple of different points on here. So obviously, uh, underneath the about Eddie section, we've got challenges, pain points, Brands and influencers, and let's put in uh, business goals as well. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, and also if you think about it, guys, if you're not with it so far, what is a persona? It's a fictional character. Yeah. However, how do you do this to get answers to these questions? And this is for all sakes. What you're actually going to do? You're going to interview existing customers. Yeah. You're going to interview customers who are no longer customers who have maybe stopped dealing with you. And why? Prospects who maybe haven't bought off you yet will live in that currency. Um, and then ultimately, the way you would do that is pick those out and get an independent to interview them. You know, if you interview them, they may not always be honest with you. Maybe. Whereas, so that's why working with an agency, we interview a lot of people. They open up, tell us what's and all about what they think or don't think or like or dislike about the company. Yeah. Uh, but not only about the company, about the process, the journey, and things like that. So, what you do is take real life interviews of customers and prospects. And then you fill in the blanks with fictional assumptions. And then that's why, the, as you said, you, you constantly, you know, update them as you, as you get new people in. Okay. So we mentioned earlier, the reason people buy from you is either to solve a problem or meet an aspiration. That's an exchange of value. That's why they're giving you money as a business. Um, and the other thing I'd like to say right up out of the gate is this is a persona template for creating a B2B. If you're in B2C markets, it's still relevant, uh, although you would work a lot more heavy in the about any section and the business profile. Not so know, much that. Yeah, and it could be more situational profile, you know. I'm a private individual who's maybe a little bit overweight and I want, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a, a health mode or whatever it might be, but you'll pick that up in other sections. So this is a B2B template, but challenges. This is really the money ball. And like we said right at the top of the, the podcast, um, we made a bold claim that we guarantee that the persona we're going to show you at the end is probably as detailed as you will see. And, you know, it does really start with who we're dealing with, who is Eddie, how old he is, you know, or, you know, if, if you target a persona for a female, that's fine, how old she is and things like that. But challenges. Our Eddie, it's all about how does he want to grow his business? He wants to raise capital. He wants to grow his revenue. He wants to 3x his business. He's probably currently doing two and a half million. He's going to seven and a half million. But he's hitting obstacles and his challenges are he's being held back, uh, either struggling to raise capital. He, he sees these high risk opportunities and you know he wants to increase revenue, but he wants to systemize his team. And these are all the challenges he's got, which systems use, which advisors should he appoint, all this type of stuff. He's, he, he's got skill gaps all over his business. His, his skill gap register looks like a colander that holds all over it. You know, he's, he's a small to medium team growing up out of a bootstrap business. He, he, should he recruit? Should they recruit? He's got all these and he doesn't have a lead gen system in place. He's losing customers as fast as he's getting them or he's not looking after them. So there's all these type of challenges. And then the pain points as, a, as, as, a, as an outcome of that, you know, the challenges are one thing, but what's the pain is suffering? Um, and ultimately dysfunctional marketing and sales. Uh, where to start, how to start, and who to trust. Does he invest here and get it wrong and then end up back at zero? Um, he's un unable to commit time to learning this himself because he's multitasking, he's running the sales team, he's, he, he's working at the, at the board level, he's trying to raise investments, he's trying to keep his team motivated, he's trying to keep his customers happy. Head cook and bottle washing. Head cook and bottle washing, perfect. Uh, and he just hasn't got the time to learn. So you can see how us as an agency can step into any shoes and say, hey, 
just vent on us, tell us what your problem is. Let's understand it. We understand it. We see you there. We, we work with people like you all the time. We, we solve these challenges. Are you suffering from this or that? And he's going, yes. And it feels like we're just talking to him because we understand him so much. So challenges and pain points. If you get anything right, get your challenges and your pain points right. And the way I like to do it, we'll show you later on, is list a set of challenges out and then list the pain points, what, what, those, what those challenges give you pain equally, and get those mirrored off. So if you've got challenge one, get pain point one. Challenge two, pain point two, et cetera. Um, and then I think if you really get down to that level, that's pretty cool. Business goals. If you don't understand his business goals, and again, if it's a, 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 a B2C or a retail customer. Well, personal goals. Well, personal goals, yeah. 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 Do, well. do, you, know, you know, do they want to, you know, uh, landscape the garden? Do they want to have a better garden than, you know, the neighbours or, you know, whatever it would be? Do they want a bigger conservatory or a, a better swimming pool or whatever it might be? Um, but yeah, what are the goals? Because if you think about how you're marketing and certainly your sales content is going to get created, how on earth can you put a message out that's going to resonate with them if you don't understand what the goals are or what they're trying to achieve. So I'm not a, a fully trained copywriter. I do a bit of copywriting. We've got copywriters in our agency, but I know Gary will say something along the lines of, "Hey, Mike, you want to lose, you know, ten kilos as an example." You know, if he's speaking to me, "Hey, do you want to lose ten kilos?" Yeah, I do want to lose ten kilos, but that's just a surface level of it. And understanding the goals is well. You know, I'm going on holiday. I want to have better. You know. Fitting clothes. I want to be confident when I take my shirt off on the beach. They're the type of things that you're going to get down to understand the goals. So he doesn't really want to lose weight as the main objective. That's that's just the starting point. What he wants, he wants a beach, a body perfect beach body. Uh, on you know when, when he takes his shirt off and he wants to feel healthier and fitter and things like that as a lifestyle. So it's understanding not just to lose weight, but why he wants to lose weight as a business goal or a personal goal. Yeah. And if it, why he wants to grow, does that mean he can recruit more people? He can take a step back. He can open that second branch. He can, um, uh, you know, maybe expand into a new market. That's why he wants to grow. But then be specific, put a number on it. Usually tied back to revenue is, is a great pro tip. Um, and then, you know, personal goals. What does it mean to Eddie? Yeah. If he achieves his business goals, does that mean he gets to spend more time with his family? And things like that. All big, important things. Perfect. Uh, there are a couple of points that we have actually got on uh, the about any section. So obviously, uh, there's a lot more on there, like obviously core values. Obviously, so what else actually could be on there? So obviously, uh, not that we have all the answers. Because actually, we actually never have all the answers because obviously we don't work in every single industry yeah. full time. So obviously, uh, there will always be something in the about any section that will actually probably be specific to obviously uh, whatever industry or actually whatever person's obviously personal. Uh, if they are being to see, to actually go through or actually what they are. I think you mentioned also, Jay, about brands and influencers. I didn't pick up on that, sorry, I just made it off my notes. But, you know, why is brands and influencers, Eddie, is brands and influencers important? Because when you're putting your content out there, if you are doing any outbound display ads, and he's a regular contributor to the American Express magazine or the HBR magazine, doesn't it make sense to put your message in there where he, you know he hangs out and we're going to get more water and all but, you know, brands and influencers, you could say, look, you know, you can make references. If you supply the brands and influencers that Eddie's associated or is more likely to be associated with, then you'll see ours later on. It's Virgin, it's Sony, it's Apple, it's things like that, the premium type brands that Eddie likes to aspire to wear. Um, I don't think we show it, but, you know, Boss clothing or some type of modern fashion label clothing. Yeah. You know, you know, you can make reference to that and you can link that into your copy, not only for display or online advertising, but you can make references and tell the story and conversational around that. So he connects with it. So, you know, often we've had clients say, Mike, one of the reasons why we joined your agency is it felt like you were speaking to us personally, as if we were the only client that you had. And it's really pleasing because it tells us we've got it right, that you know, we, we've really drilled into the mind and had a conversation at the forefront of their mind. And that's what understanding you know, about Eddie means to us. And you know, our persona fit there. 
Yeah, and, and by the way, we show new entrepreneur Eddie here. Yeah. Uh, he's more associated to a high growth service business. Mm. But we have Legal Laura, who's a solicitor, a, a lawyer. Um, you know, with Automotive Andy for our automotive niches in there. Influencer Isaac, who's you know more of a, a, a digital nomad influencer yeah. type you know, thing. So we've got all with six different personas in our business that all things. And when a client comes on, you know, it may she may be Sally Jones. But in his mind, it's an entrepreneur already, or it's an influencer, Isaac, or it's an automotive Andy. It's a luxury leisure lead. You know, we have luxury lifestyle lead, should I say not luxury leisure, luxury lifestyle lead. Uh, so we actually still call them that, even though, you know, that because we know what you know presses the buttons and, and what we need to get there. So, so that's really about getting to understand the demographics, the psychographics, the geographics, the income levels, and things like that. But we'll show you more of that when we show you the finished one. Exactly. So obviously, uh, going on to the next section of obviously uh, building uh, a persona would be watering holes. So I, I know that we've got a couple of different points on watering holes. Uh, watering holes are basically where they hang out and obviously where obviously we can uh, target and attract uh, our best customers from, uh, i.e. social channels, content types. Obviously, I know uh, obviously content types, I'll actually go into that one a bit more as well. The preference, subscriptions, what, what clubs they're a part of, motivation, uh, Triggers. So obviously uh, we can go through a couple of these now, Mike. So obviously yeah. let's actually start with social channels at the top. Absolutely. And again, even Apple, who a trillion dollar business, doesn't have an unlimited marketing budget. No. So at some point you're going to have a budget cap on your spend, whether that's paid or organic activities. Um, so again, doesn't it make sense? We talked about it earlier um, that you know if you are local. Uh, or you're on the line, uh, different products would be done there. But equally, uh, if you have got a limited advertising or marketing budget, doesn't it make sense that you put it on the channels where these people hang out? If they're heavily B2B, you might be more weighted to LinkedIn. Um, if you're B2C, you may be more weighted to Facebook. And organic posts, social stories, Instagram, TV stories, yeah. whatever. You know, but ultimately, put the message where the eyeballs are. If you're putting the message behind me, I ain't seeing it. You know, if you're doing a, a country type promotion for a country brand, and you're advertising that in the city center, initial reaction is, hey, Why do you uh, well, actually, that's a trick question, because it's exactly there, because what do all the city the dwellers want to do? They want to get away to the country. So it may be a company, so you've got to put that on the side of the bus, because it's like, do you want to get away to the country, you know, vacation, plan, you know, whatever it would be. But in the same token, if you are targeting a rural, local scene, which, and you put it in just in the total, uh, oh, yeah. well, nobody's going to see it. So put your adverts, put your messages, online or offline, where you've got the best chance of seeing it and understand your audience. And Gen Z is going to be different to Gen X, Gen, you know, millennial. They're all going to have different places where they do on social. And that's equally linked into content time. A lot of the younger uh, generations want visual, interactive, instant content. They don't want to maybe read a 3,000 word blog. No. Maybe they want to lead a po listen to a podcast. We had a conversation about podcasting, how you listen to podcasts and what do you do while you listen to podcasts. Exactly. So if you meet a podcast, I actually listen to podcasts while I do things. So obviously, whether or not that's on a Sunday morning when I'm actually uh, tidying the house, or obviously anything like that, or actually when I'm driving, I'll actually listen to a podcast. Obviously, uh, I don't. While you're doing something else, while I'm doing something else, uh, just feel it just keeps my mind at it. I can't do things as a side. But obviously, uh, that's actually uh, just a personal thing from that side. But I know there is actually quite a lot of people who do just literally sit down and watch a podcast. Yeah. Uh, John Rogan or something like John, that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, like I've myself, I listen to his podcast while I'm doing other things, because obviously it can be two to three, uh, <laughs> sometimes even four, four hours longer than this podcast, obviously, so I need to do other things while I'm uh, doing that type of stuff. But yeah, yeah. obviously, uh, different types, like I know that you could obviously sit down there for four hours yeah. just to watch all the drive the podcast. Exactly, so obviously different types. I'm, I, well, obviously, uh, that actually kind of defeats the point. Uh, it's obviously with different generations, and I kind of need uh, uh, do the same thing from that side. Yeah. You know, and then content preference, that's, that's you know, do, do they want to have it live streamed or the instant, do they want it in a, in, a, in a downloadable document, do they prefer interactive and things like that? Do they subscribe to solutions? Do they subscribe to HBR? Do they subscribe to the local cricket club? You know, and that's at two different levels. You've got international Harvard Business Review on one publication, online subscription, a magazine, now to a local cricket club. So what do they subscribe to? What are they involved with? You know, uh, are they in mums net groups, things like that, and clubs? 
But here's what I do want to just spend a, a quick minute or two on, Jane. That's yeah. motivation triggers. So when you're thinking about your content and where you're going to place it, what's going to get them to move? Because that's what we're trying to get them to do here. What's going to make them to move? Now, for Eddie, going with fear and scaremongering tactics doesn't motivate Eddie. You know, it, you know, a, a last minute deal, if it's going to run out, might, yeah. might get him to move at some point. But motivation and gain. If you do this, so I'm going to use the weight loss example again. If you follow my weight loss program, you will have a healthier lifestyle. What it's not, what that motivates Eddie to take action. Yeah. What doesn't motivate Eddie is if you don't take my weight loss program, you're going to remain overweight and have bad health. Mm. He already knows that. So he wants to see the end result and the solution. So think about, are you trying to motivate them and take action through gain, i.e. the positive outcome, fear, which is a negative pitch, which is okay, it's used in copy all the time, uh, or logic, and you know, the scientific brain well, is the logical thing to do type of thing. So motivational triggers um, work different in different watering holes. Depends if you're at different stages of the funnel. Uh, from there. So that's a real big one, and that should go through your content. And sometimes you have to change the motivational trigger based on the stage of the funnel. Um, so if you're hitting Eddie at the top of the funnel, here's what he could gain out of it. If he is two minds whether he should make the move and get his credit card out at the bottom of the funnel, you could maybe introduce a little bit of fear of loss, but use it like salt in a recipe as a sprinkle. Don't overdo it. So it's understanding the motivation triggers on different channels as well. Perfect. So obviously, uh, that is obviously the water and hold, uh, obviously part of uh, building a persona. So obviously, the third part is, and obviously uh, this part, like us, what we covered in the first uh, section, mainly uh, mainly comes into play when obviously uh, we are working on a B two B business. Obviously, uh, if it is actually B two C, like I just mentioned earlier, you would focus a lot more heavily on obviously uh, the about of the A B section in this example. But well, obviously, uh, because Entrepreneur Ready is a B2B customer, uh, we are going to actually go uh, into this in a bit more detail as well. So but, be- but what I'll do is I'll try and throw in a couple of B2C alternatives. Yeah. So, that, that, you know, so please stick around. If you're B2C only, you'll still get a lot of value out of this. Of course, yeah. So obviously, uh, on the Entrepreneur's business profile, uh, we've got some, like, our, our office business type, time in business, current revenue, forecast revenue, current employees and forecast employees, market stage, product service stage, and price and position. Yeah. Cool. So just picking a couple out, what type of business are they that are you targeting? Are they big corporate? You're going to need lots of information. Yeah. A multi-stage step buying process. If they're a smaller local business, then you're dealing usually with the business owner yeah. and make the decision. So understand it. It also drives the sales cycle or the buyer's process. Time and business. Is that important? It may or may not be. To us it is. Because what stage are they? Are they a start seed startup? Are they at grow or are they at survival stage? Then are they at growth stage? Are they at you know, scale up stage, maturity, decline, or looking to exit? And that's all different strategies that we need to know. Revenue, um, you know, ultimately, if you're targeting, um, you know, high ticket premium items to a mid range income family or a person, you're probably out of line. Unless it's a lottery win or super big disposable income you know, surge, you're probably going to miss the point. And I see this more with age targeting than anything else, um, you know, when the business profiling, but they're just targeting the wrong people and the wrong ages uh, with the wrong message. So, it, you know, understanding your persona allows you to iron those creases out. How many people do they have? Does that matter? It may or may not to your business. I don't know. But, you know, ultimately, if you're a software supplier selling SaaS software and they've got 100 users, the cost to use your product is going to be significantly greater than they've got 10 users. So think about your positioning. You know, do you have an unlimited plan, a starter plan, a mid-range plan, you know, to accommodate that? So, you know, the number of employees and the number of people who will use your product may dictate the pricing strategy or the bundle strategy that you may need. Or it may just be the licenses or the amount of people you need to train or go in and deal with. So that's something that, you know, you should certainly consider when it comes to the number of employees. So market stage, we talked about it earlier, growth stage, maturity. Um, if again, you've got a low ticket product uh, that's designed for new start businesses and you're hitting scale ups, it's, it's not even going to touch the It's not going to move the needle for them. So stop sending the wrong message to the wrong people. 
product service stage, it may be a growth stage business, but they may have a mature product. You know, if you look at DUI lawyers in LA, it's a pretty mature product. Uh, you know, it's heavy cost per click. Uh, but ultimately, uh, the product is pretty mature. Um, you know, but so if you're an aggressive upstart coming into attack, legal advice in there, you know, you may struggle with that. Pricing position, know who they're at, know where they're at, you know, because it's pointless. Everybody wants a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a supercar, or maybe it like some of the more classic cars like Lamborghini Mirrors or, you know, some of the old, um, you know, you know, fast Fords or Mopar stuff, you know, whatever it would be, muscle cars. So we all want that, but do we have the budget for it? You know, there's a lot of bankrupt businesses out there trying to sell products to the wrong buyers. Um, even, you know, I, I can give you half a dozen examples in, in, in our business where we've got lower level entry new start businesses who love what we do, but they just don't have the budget. So we're trying to help them in the community, the growth engine community. If you haven't checked that out, go to community.1630.com. There's a free, you can join and get access to our content in there. That's community.1630.com. Uh, and you can download that on app and, and take us with you on the go as well, where we can help you. But um, that's a better place to start with them and, and, and get them into some of our courses more than trying to sell them a full agency product. So what are some of your pricing positions? You know, and again, why are we doing this? It, because it allows you to have, instead of having two or three campaigns for one customer, you might have 15 campaigns. You know, I'm not saying you will, but if you've already got 15 campaigns and you can distill this down, you might get it down to five. Save yourself a lot of cost and be more targeted. So it works both ways. Either expand your campaign reach at different stages or, you know, dilute them down and concentrate them to get better effect. So knowing your customer, knowing your persona helps you do that. Perfect, that's great stuff on the business profile side. Uh, the next section would be key questions. So obviously, uh, there's a couple of key questions that I would actually like to go into on this one, which is obviously the what scares them, which obviously, I know is a big one, obviously, and also obviously, the cost of inaction, and yeah. obviously, uh, what's the hopes and dreams, which is uh, basically it's the top three questions. Yeah, so what scares them? You know, if you can tap into that, not in a fear thing that, you know, if you don't do this, this will happen. That, that doesn't always work. Um, Rarely does it quite a lot of time, doesn't it? Yeah, you can use it as a say, like salt to remind them that to, to take action. But what's good, if you can really tap into that, that's where it goes to forefront of mind. You're talking to me, wow, from there. That you can really make a difference to um, put a message in front of them to say, if this is a concern to you, we've got a solution that may help. Give them half of that solution, at least free. As in, not not a product, but the, the advice: do this, take this. If you're in this position, if you're if you're concerned about mental health, here's some steps that you can yeah. take. Give them eight and nine of that, and then hey, you want to learn more? Maybe you want to speak to one of our advisors and bring them in that way. But give them it there. Don't show them a little bit. Look, we, what we do here, we give you our full persona strategy that you know, we charge thousands of dollars to create for people. We're giving you this free. Um, you know, we, we're not really holding anything off yet. If you want to work with us, hit the let's talk button and we can set up a call. But ultimately, we're giving you that to, to get you on your way. Don't hold back is what I'm saying. What's the cost of inaction? Um, again, use it like salt. Uh, certainly with, um, you know, uh, this type of persona, purely and simply because um, if they don't do something and they're concerned about the health or whatever it would be, remind them, it's bad for them, you know. But the best way to do that, guys, is to say to them in copy, why did this get on your radar to start with? Well, it got on the radar to start with because I put on a few pounds of kilos and I weren't happy about it. I know my holiday's coming up. Remind them why that happened, why it came to the forefront of the mind. Once you're at that stage, then you can say, well, hey, doesn't it make a lot of logical sense yeah, to maybe yeah. really look at this and get this back on your agenda and put some budget aside? So it's there. So what's scared in the cost of inaction? Hopes and dreams. Ask, them to, ask your customers to dream out with you. If, you. if you've got beautiful landscape gardens or swimming pools as a product, especially if it's a sexy product, ask them to dream out. Imagine having summer parties with a meticulously garden and a swimming pool out there. See how you can get them excited. What does that mean to your family, your life, your, you know, your property value? by investing into that. You know, if you don't have much of a sexy product, then, you know, that's, that, that's fair enough. Um, then it, it goes back into maybe a personal role, like we said before, but ultimately, get them to dream out with it. You know, show them the finished article. Hey, you know, do you, you know, before and after, maybe a bit of social proof. And back to the weight loss example, Jay, here's, here's, here's Dominic, 
Dominic were 190 pounds. He went through our program and he's now 150 pounds. Look at his beach body, the where it were. Um, get him to dream, this could be you. Do you want to look like Dominic type of thing? Or, you know, or Sally? Um, so yeah, show them a little bit of that as well. But we'll, we'll show a couple of questions in, in the finished persona yeah. on that section as well. Of course, yes. That's also great. Honestly, the key questions part is a really important part, obviously. Yeah, of, oh, so a little session because uh, that's the part that gets us to really understand why I'm just probably uh, inquiring with us in the first place. Yeah, you got it. Obviously, and then uh, scrolling down into your solution part. So we've only got three points on this one, but uh, doesn't mean to say that this uh, section is uh, any less important than any of the other ones because, uh, in short, uh, your solution is actually supposed to help them out and it's actually supposed to obviously move them forward. So I was just, what we've got is uh, what will they buy, what's the price point, and what's your value proposition. Yeah. So think about what, why we're we doing this, guys. We're doing this because we want to understand our prospects and audience. Uh, if you went back and saw uh, Why Go Inbound podcast, it's, it's uh, one of the early ones that we did. Um, we said when we talked to the C-suite, why are you doing this? You want growth, you want market share, you want to make more money, you want more profit. And ultimately, you want to sell more and you want to lower your cost of client acquisition and you want to bring it in there. So once we understand who Entrepreneur Ready is and we go through all these things and we understand that we've got campaigns that are optimized and really working, we're solving his problems and moving forward. One thing that I see often uh, the people don't have a conversion piece in their content strategy. Oh, I've been told to blog twice a week, three times a week. Yeah, great thing. That's the right thing to do. I've been told to put the amplifier on social. Absolutely. But at what point are you just fueling your egos to put it out there? At some point, we talked about the jab, 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 right hook in an earlier podcast. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to say, hey, now I've made you aware of this. Now I've helped you through your journey. And I've shown you a transformation, a transformation or a, a solution. Would you like to buy something? So it makes sense that to align a product that you would do. So for Eddie here, we'll show you when we show you the finished um, article. And um, what product would you sell them to achieve this? One thing I will say is it's very rare, probably less than 5% that we would go through a persona workshop with a client. And especially if they're in one of our medium retainers where we do more than one persona. Yeah. In almost every case, 90, 90, 95% of the times, the, our client changes their product to service. Because they say, oh, I can see why they're not buying it now. Okay, we'll change the product. Or, hey, this product's just dead. You know, let's revamp it or repackage it or rename it. Or let's split it in two and, and do a small and a medium. Or let's add something to it to make it better. So in, in, if you're not open to change your product line, I'm not asking McDonald's to change the Big Mac. That's pretty well established. But um, what you will see, even McDonald's change the menu, you know, to, based on times and, and age demographics and things like that. As the population, when I was growing up, there was one McDonald's in probably the town where I grew up. There's probably 10 McDonald's in that region now. Yeah. But as the, so McDonald's wasn't that popular when I was growing up as a kid. Now they're everywhere. For the younger generation, they couldn't live life without McDonald's. So can you see the need to change the menu? For me, I'm a 30 year veteran of McDonald's because it's been around in my mind for 30 odd years, whatever it would be. For you, it's been around. It's been there for as long as I can remember. But it's a shorter period, so you're, you're more frequent to change. I'm thinking, well, I'll go for the more traditional Big Mac, you know, from there. So ultimately, uh, personas will probably, and you should challenge your product team or your marketing team or your C-suite team, whatever size of business you are, to say, hey, now we know our persona. Overlay your product. Do they still work? What needs to change? And if I guarantee you, you'll, you'll find some improvement. If not, shoot us a message using hashtag, you know, go inbound, inbound podcast, things like that. Love to know how it's helped or changed. So uh, from that side. So what will they buy? And it may mean from that that you change the price point. We have now a starter product or a premium product or whatever. And ultimately, developing your persona should help you bring out your product and your value proposition, which is why people buy from you over a competitor. Yeah. Um, and it really does help you. And one of the most satisfying things for me is when I go through a, a persona workshop with a client and then they get, I now get it. I can see it. I can see what we've been doing wrong. These are common things that said. So again, that you know builds the value proposition. It's really important because this is where what I call the tires hit the target and you get traction. Perfect. So 
So uh, that is obviously your solution section yeah. uh, of obviously uh, the type of development. Uh, last one is before and after. Yeah. So obviously uh, this is where uh, you did actually slightly touch on it and yeah. actually very in the last uh, session. But what do they have as in obviously before and uh, what do they have after? How do they feel? What does their average day look like? And actually what's their status now? Yeah, well, what I think we do on this one, Jay, because this is actual visualization of moving the needle, I didn't show that in the finished persona, but just to address it for those listening who can't actually watch. Yeah. By the way, if, you, you know, if you're listening on an Audible app here, if you head over to theinboundpodcast.com, uh, you can pick up this episode about uh, you know, uh, building the uh, persona templates. Um, and there's a full video of us talking through this, this map, so um, you can download the resources plus a blank persona templates yeah. as well to get you going. Um, but what do they have before? They're probably frustrated. What do they have to? They're happy. You know, how do they feel? You know, negative, underachieving, overweight, call it whatever you want to do. How do they feel afterwards? We're overachievers. You know, we're, we're slimmer. Well, you know, what's average day like? Oh, I hit brick walls. I don't want to go to work. Or I don't want to go to home see my wife. Or I don't want to book that holiday. Afterwards, I can't wait to do that. You know, so it's about moving the needle after they've consumed your product. And that's also a product uh, test linked into the earlier section I said about the solution that, hey, if our product no longer moves the needle for any, I need to change it. And uh, what's the status underachiever to rock star? You know, it's things like that. So that's the six part framework uh, that we use. Uh, so that's the what guys, but with more on the inbound podcast, we started it, not just to tell you what, you can go anywhere and there's a hundred people out there telling you the what. We're going to show you the how and the why and everything in between. So should we bounce over and show a finished persona? Perfect. Uh, yeah. So it's, uh, like as Mike said, this is all for six uh, section. I'm now going to quickly go over two hour uh, entrepreneur edit and actually to show you what an actual uh, uh, built out actually flashed out persona looks like. This so, is the chance where the listeners get to call me out. Exactly. So uh, this is entrepreneur edit. And, uh, cool. Quick actually, a couple of us on Entrepreneur Ready. This is obviously for our, uh, we've got a lot of, obviously the name, and obviously one of the main things that we've actually not even actually mentioned in this yeah. podcast, it's extremely important to name your persona. It is. <laughs> name your persona. So obviously what we've also got is that uh, we've also got the niche, which obviously uh, Entrepreneur Ready, mainly for luxury lifestyle and obviously high growth service business. Yeah, it's like a, he's, he's, he's the main shareholder, maybe his wife's got a shareholder yeah. in it. Uh, he's got a couple of junior directors who's, you know, who's come up through the bootstrapping stage with him. Um, and the main more has got director titles but don't own shares or equity in the business. So it's that two and a half, three yeah. million pound, uh, three million dollar business what's ready to go and, uh, and you know, scale up really. So that's it. So exactly. and actually, we're going to quickly go through this now. Obviously, uh, quick one on Entrepreneur already. Obviously, we have actually uh, built this out. Obviously, uh, what is it now? Two and a half years ago, this Entrepreneur already yeah. built out. And actually, uh, it is actually coming up to the time where it is actually uh, time for our uh, part three. Quarter three. Well, end of quarter two, which is six months yet. Yeah. End of quarter two, which is actually ready for us to review this within the next obviously, couple of weeks before obviously the close out of obviously because uh, this podcast is obviously June 2020. Yeah. This is actually getting ready for us to uh, quickly review this, see if there's any optimizations that we need to make, and then obviously I like can that. see one well, already from two clients we brought in in quarter two, which is uh, exactly. new things that we need to add for sure. Exactly. So perfect. So that's obviously why obviously we do this. So obviously scrolling down our trip already and. Uh, just a quick one to note now, guys. Obviously, uh, we obviously did Entrepreneur already. Uh, we have actually probably put around 30 hours into this persona, Easy, roughly. Yeah. Uh, and oh, obviously, that's not all built out in one. We probably did, uh, we actually did a quick strategy session first, obviously, it's like a two or three hour slice of session, uh, to actually getting like, the basics on. And then, obviously, it's what we've done is every so often, like uh, once a month or so, something like that, we just quickly added in a couple of things uh, until we got it to uh, the stage where we were happy with. And now, obviously, uh, like what Mike uh, mentioned earlier in the podcast as well, uh, probably every quarter we do a review, and then and obviously by year we will then obviously do some uh, updates to a trapper. Sure. Yeah. So obviously, uh, first one is actually down underneath, obviously this little uh, bio image of any that we've got, and then obviously we've got his uh, major quote underneath. So obviously, this one is failure is not an option; we will achieve our goals. Yeah. And actually, that just obviously kind of puts into perspective. Uh, puts into perspective and also one phrase of actually who actually we're actually looking to work with. Somebody who wants to move forward. Somebody it's going all on the line. Yeah, he's probably raised money against his house with his young kids or something. 
You know, he's got it on the line. He can't afford to fail. This is Apollo 13 stuff, guys. You know, fail is not an option. You know, if you've ever seen the 1990s film with Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon, you know, Bill Paxton, uh, replicating the Apollo 13 disaster. You know, failure ain't an option, guys. It's got to work because he loses everything. If, it, if and you know, and that's not just credibility and faith. It's potentially it's roof over. Exactly. So he's got to make this work. Exactly. So, uh, first thing down the left hand side we have actually got is uh, obviously this uh, uh, the about any section in terms of what we discussed in the first. Obviously, so uh, we've got some uh, quick parts here, which shows that is uh, between the ages of 28 and 35. Uh, it's actually probably even potentially is actually a second business. What we haven't yeah. actually noted down there, which uh, actually should be now that I'm on the recording this podcast. Uh, obviously, he's obviously the MD. Uh, he's a uh, family relationship. He's married. Obviously, uh, got one kid. He's uh, probably in like the inner city. Uh, he's got like a college level education, uh, uh, income level. Uh, obviously, uh, the reason why we've also got the income level as well as uh, business level. Uh, Income level also determines what obviously uh, we ask them to later on, which are all about personal goals. Yeah, obviously, like a personal goal for myself would be to buy a Ferrari if obviously uh, I was in that obviously bracket of obviously being able to buy a Ferrari. <laughs> so, obviously, just uh, scroll down into this section. Obviously, we've got the current revenue of the business, obviously, we've got a 36 month obviously revenue forecast. Obviously, that'd be seven and a half, and then obviously, uh, it wants to grow obviously uh, a few times. So obviously, uh, next part is uh, we've got obviously got on personality as well. But obviously, before we get into that, I'm just going to quickly go up to the top, which is obviously where obviously Mike did his uh, guarantee that you've never seen a persona as a as a flesh out. That's going to get called out, that's not it. Potentially, yeah. So obviously, first of all, we've got challenges. Yeah, and look, guys, you know this podcast will be three hours if we did it, so we are going to go through it. So I do, if you are listening on an app. I highly recommend you go up to theinboundpodcast.com, uh, check out the Persona podcast and go and watch this because you can see this through as well as download the templates. But, you know, as you can see here, he, he wants to grow his business, he wants to raise capital, he's got to increase revenues, he wants to systemize, he want these time shortages, big skill gaps, he's not making data deformed, uh, data informed decisions. And that's so important because, you know, ultimately, if you're 5% wrong on your numbers when you're doing half a million a year, it's, it's recoverable. You start with being 5% wrong at two and a half to three million, it, it could make the difference to stay in business and not be. Yeah. So these are concerning and these are all the challenges. Uh, and he wants to attract a better marketing director or a better sales director, you know, a VP of sales. Uh, but, you know, he needs to put things in place and get his house in order before he can do that. Um, and then as you drop down into pain points there, you know, he's tried to do the DIY, bought cheap, lost money, he's back at square one. You know, he's worse off. He doesn't like where he's at. He, he, the growth's been held back. Uh, where and how to start, dysfunctional marketing, these are all pain points, and he's getting punched in the face every single day. Um, you know, dilution of focus, he's not concentrating. So he's doing a lot of things poorly, instead of, and that's frustrating. And he's now saying, enough's enough, I want to go and get something to come in. Um, you know, often he's asked to discount his service, even though he knows his product's good. And he said, why not to discount? Because he's not educating, he's bringing the wrong people in. So, you know, he's wanting to bring better quality leads into his business just so he could, you know, get the worth of what he believes him and his product and services worth. Um, you know, and he's suffered from recruiting marketers and salespeople who have not worked out in the past. They just don't get it or understand where he is, you know. And so, okay, we get that. What else do we know about him? Well, you know, ultimately, he loves the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Yeah. You know, he doesn't see all the risks. But he's got a couple of confidence that he, he speaks to. And, you know, what we're doing now, guys, for those listening, we're going down. And I've, I've only probably touched 5% of this persona. Uh, there's so many. You know, there's probably 10, 20 uh, points per section here. Um, uh, yeah. Now, I say, so we've only mentioned, like, uh, two or three points on the last <laughs> that we know, and there's probably 15 to 20 points. Yeah, so you can it. see the depth that we've got here. Um, you know, he sails close to the wind. He's wondering how he's making payday at the end of the month, and he's fed up with that, and that's yeah. stressing him out. You know, he'd love to own a second holiday or maybe provide private schooling for his kids, or so maybe a bit of a property investor. A couple of other things we know about his tonality. He's definitely the decision maker. He has junior directors. You know, he's focused on the outcome with some immediate fires to address. Um, you know, he's failed before he wants the right partner. Um, other things that we know is about his business goals. He wants to 3X his business and he wants to come up with the plan. The plan that's going to scale into 7.5 million, exit in five years and get a real good business. 
Personal values driven, persevering, confident, sincere, diverse, creative, intuitive, financially motivated, is futuristic, he buys into tech, he's a family man, you know, he's righteous, he's sincere. Um, you know, his personality is a bit of an extrovert, but he's a thinker, he doesn't go on feeling. No. Uh, he, he likes intuition and he's perceiving, he's not judgmental. So all these things that we can see. And that really wraps up in a real summary case oh, what number one is. And like I say, guys, when you're watching this on the video, yeah. uh, you're probably... Cover. He didn't even cover his character traits. The Did we not? Course, and also his gurus as well. Man. Yeah, his gurus are in there. Alan Sugar, Warren Buffett, Steve Jobs, yeah. Tim Ferry, Gary V, Brands, Merck, Virgin, Apple, Sony. Uh, character traits, he's motivated, he's a visionary, he's resilient. He's got a failure recovery ability. So every time somebody says, no, the bank turns him down for that loan, one of his top sales and leaps, okay, it's okay, we'll sort it, we'll go and figure it out, we'll go and get it. So can you see how we how targeted we can be with our marketing messages to address these? So when we get, Mike, are you speaking to me? This is just me. Yeah, you tell me why I you. I've got it down on the I know the dirt under his fingernails because we've taken the time to find out and that allows us to put targeted messages in at this point. Um, so that's just wrapping up the top half of it. That's not even the start of it. Uh, and then in the next section, Jay, we're going to cover things like uh, where they hang out. Yeah, like. of course. So uh, the next section is actually uh, where do they hang out, obviously. So uh, on that to this part, we've obviously got the uh, consider where they're watering all that, that's just what most of it is them, which obviously what the uh, second part of uh, the actual process of building persona was. So uh, we've got obviously uh, where do they hang out, and then obviously favorite social channels. Obviously, uh, with entrepreneur, I think that's just the type of person, obviously, uh, the age demographic, uh, and obviously what we've actually collected from his uh, demographics, person, uh, personographics, uh, uh, psychographics, etc. He is uh, mainly on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, obviously, because obviously, especially the type of industry is in high growth service businesses. Obviously, it's, it's a lot more related to LinkedIn compared to obviously Twitter, which obviously yeah. we can see right now on the bottom. He doesn't see Twitter as a real channel. No. It's something that he goes and laughs at Trump about, or politics, or yeah. the, the memes that's flying around his sports exactly. team. That's, that's, he doesn't see it, it doesn't contribute yeah. to where he wants to get to. It's not a business platform yeah. in his eyes. So obviously, uh, then scrolling down more, we've obviously got uh, Think Past just on their social channels, or what blogs are, what's a blog to them. Uh, so he's on a marketing blog, he's on investment blogs, uh, community-based organizations. Like which we've got our community, that would be the type of actually community that it would obviously be involved in. Obviously, podcasts, massive on podcasts, off the which is what we've put on here, uh, which is actually industry or growth specifics. So it's not just podcasting or like uh, anything, it would be podcasting which then move and obviously oh, better himself and actually moving forwards. So uh, scrolling down into the next part of it, which obviously uh, his information sources, his preferred channels, and his motivation. Obviously, books and audio books are a massive one for him. Obviously, uh, just as well. He's learning all the time. He's, he's actually learning, and actually, start watching the podcast section. And he actually wants to better himself. He wants to improve. So, so that then he can then move forward. Yeah. Uh, magazines, not as much, but he'll still just pick them up. Like I can see, uh, how the business reviews a big one. Obviously, yeah. uh, 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 from that side, blogs. Obviously, uh, great source of information. Websites and then conferences and expos. Uh, obviously, uh, underpreferred. Channels, yeah, it, it doesn't do traditional ads, no. he doesn't do it, he doesn't see it, he's on very online social, very online. he's a line of thinking business, and, he, and, he's, and, and he's half and half now. He's built his business on a lot of referrals. But he now, he, the trouble with referrals, if you sat here saying, Hey, I get all my business from referrals, well, there's two problems with that one, it ain't predictable, and two, it ain't scalable. You ain't gonna raise venture capital on the hope that your buddy's gonna refer you a deal. It ain't gonna happen. And, I, and that's me, I'm not calling out the BNIs or all the networking, they're all awesome organizations. And it's one smaller cog in a great wheel, and it's fantastic to have a referral and affiliate strategy in there. Yeah. It ain't scalable, and it ain't uh, you know it, yeah. it's predictable. So he's now seeing that he's got to take control, and he's, he's he's more exhausted those referrals. So he's got to get out there and overlay that, and that's why it's half and half. And his guerrilla efforts and PR doesn't really see PR guerrilla efforts. He likes to try a few crazy plans, yeah. but he's been burnt a lot. And that's mm -hmm. also going back to something that's a little bit more stable. And he, he, he's high on video, and he's wanting to get into video, getting stuff doing videos and, and things like that, and watching videos. Perfect. So then obviously moving over into the next section, which is his actual motivation. Obviously, he's in. He's obviously extremely incentive driven. Yeah. Obviously, fear not so much because obviously. 
realistically, like what you mentioned there, obviously, uh, who's actually fear is like a pinch of salt tactic. Who actually likes being scared into doing something? Obviously, you're more reluctant to do it, and actually, you probably won't put as much effort into it as if you are obviously like incentive. Uh, you're incentivized to do it. So. Yeah, absolutely. See, uh, growth as well. Uh, growth showing the results from a, uh, from a, uh, if obviously she can take one thing away from this persona is entrepreneur already wants to grow his business. Yeah. First and foremost, he wants to grow such so that so actually that that can then fuel everything else it wants to do because obviously without the growth, it's attracted to things that show him how he can grow. Exactly. Exactly. So and obviously power on that side as well, and then obviously social as well. Uh, that's just roughly about 50-50. Scrolling down into uh, the business stage section, uh, uh, which we've got real quick section because it's in actually three really easy to read graphs. Obviously, time in business, you've been in business for five years. Revenue is currently about two and a half million pounds. Obviously, uh, trying to juice below three. And then obviously, is a uh, revenue uh, forecast over the next 36 months is obviously a separate. Yeah, because it's three times his business. Exactly. Yeah, and he, and he understands that that may, allows him to meet his goals and his exit goals. You can imagine, you know, it depends what his revenue and his margins are on that, but, you know, if he's making 10 or 12% on a 7.5 million business, he's making close to nearly a million a year, he's short, he gets a five five or six multiple or eight multiple and exit, you know, it, it's a nice payday and, and, he's, yeah. and he's done from there. So, you know, that's the hopes and dreams. Whether all that happens, there's a lot of water to go under the bridge, but he's got his sight. And ultimately for us, and you know, think about how it works for you in your business. We're only giving examples in ours because this is what we know, this is what we do. Um, we work better with clients who are growth focused, the people who want to grow, have got targets, results. The ones who says, yeah, 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 I just want a bit of content out there. That's not really what we thrive on. We thrive on driving businesses to grow, whether it's 2x, 3x, 5x, we'll be realistic and open, and if it's too ambitious, we'll pull it back. But ultimately, that's what we do. So from your side, ask yourself a question, guys. What motivates um, you to do the best work for your clients? Who who get the best return out of what you do? You know, and that's the really way you want to be crafting Eddie. Um, and, you know, where do you start? Think of your most perfect client. We get the best results of appreciation. Start there. There's probably 30% of your persona built out of that client alone. Exactly. So, obviously, uh, that's it for obviously the business stage section. Scrolling through into uh, core issues, and that's just like actually what Smart said on the previous actual session. We're not going to go through all of them, just purely because obviously we could be here all, all day. So obviously, uh, what we are going to do is, though, uh, as always, obviously, uh, you can actually view this uh, inside the actual uh, links uh, section below of this podcast. Actually, also, uh, you will obviously, uh, as actually we mentioned, get a blank template of this as well, uh, so actually that you can actually fill this out uh, for yourself and actually for your own persona as well. So obviously, uh, scrolling through it, Mike. So obviously, uh, this is where we've got actually the core issues. So what keeps them awake at night? What scares them? Yeah. To remember what I said, you're either solving a problem or you're meeting an aspiration for them. So what you know, what keeps them awake at night um, and what scares them? You know, for Freddie, it's having to retreat. He, he doesn't want to have to do that. He wants to go up for the next level. Um, but it's uncharted territory. He doesn't know how to do it. So you know, it scares him that he's going to get it wrong. So what is the biggest danger they can't see yet? Upscaling too fast, not being able to come down quick enough. Hiring amateur and digital marketers, you know, and, and I call out to you, not because we're trying to pitch you here, but if you're at two and a half million and you want to get a seven and a half million, hire the right people who's walked that track or have already got strategies in place to help you do that, to fill in the knowledge gaps. Don't go and hire a, you know, a small person on Upworks, a Fiverr or a small agency who doesn't have the knowledge. They're going to put, they're going to put 500k strategies in place when you're already at two million. Then it's going to have zero impact or little impact, maybe small impact. Hire an agency that has been there, or, or go and hire, go and recruit a marketing director with skills and terms who can get you there, who, who can fill in the knowledge gaps. So that's the biggest danger that Eddie can't see, and like the biggest opportunity, show him, show him what can be done, and demonstrate credibility with your audience. That hey, if you come and join us, so if you're a solicitor, you're an accountant, you're a, you know you're a luxury watch supplier. Show them what they can have and show them your expertise and show them the journey that they can take. And that's what the greatest opportunity is a counterbalance to the biggest danger they can't see it does. Thanks. So obviously, uh, going actually down onto the next section, so we've got obviously before and after. Obviously, uh, we've got before and after, so uh, uh, what did half uh, so obviously, uh, so the half, for example, is obviously, uh, obviously a tremendous opportunity. 
and uh, started, but he's underperforming. Obviously, uh, he wants to get to the next level and beyond, obviously, to dominate his market. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, then after, well, obviously, that was just before, and then obviously, uh, after he's used, obviously, this one is uh, for obviously 16 million products. Obviously, you've got a strategic foundational uh, system to build the growth against pre identified smart goals across all key areas of marketing awareness, lead generation, and access to nurturing. Sales conversion pipeline and customer service with obviously a uh, CSAT and MPS surveys designed by 630 digital people have also been there and done it as well. Yeah, we've got a roadmap with a seven stage system that we're taking through and say, hey, you don't have to figure it out. We've already figured it out. Just follow the roadmap, we'll tailor it to figure it, it out. out. Let's actually so go through our steps um, uh, to make sure that obviously you've got the best obviously chance to obviously fulfill in obviously what he obviously wants to fulfill. So, somewhere around that section, what do they have? You know, lost opportunity, underperforming business, maybe not figuring it all out, buy one of our growth engines, it depends on what level, and you know, maybe don't buy all our services, then they have a more strategic foundational system that's a proven roadmap. Can you see how our product moves the needle? Who wants to be underfulfilled, underperforming, lost opportunity? No. Who wants a system that's trusted and was getting results? That's what the purchase is. They're not buying inbound marketing, they're buying money. They're buying money, they're buying results, they're buying growth. That's what they're buying. Exactly. So, and obviously, uh, that's just the last part I do want to cover uh, just in the before and after section. It's just this part here. Honestly, how do they feel? Yeah. So, how do they feel before and how do they feel? I know after? you see this in the client service and fulfillment exactly. all the time, don't you? Uh, this is why I wanted to cover it, just purely because obviously, from obviously the, uh, I had to get involved at the very start, uh, well, obviously, just uh, just after the start, and it's a sales to client success handover call. And obviously, uh, when I'm in that call, uh, I ask them about obviously. Why they've actually come to us in the first place, or actually, so why they've actually inquired with us, and, and obviously, why obviously they've actually decided rather than I'm going to choose 16 Digital as my growth agency yeah. to help me go forward. And obviously, this is what we've actually done from obviously uh, surveying our own clients from this side. So, obviously, they're frustrated, they've tried several things, and they've, just, they've not quite got the results. They might have actually gone, obviously, uh, somewhere else, oh, 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 they might have tried to do it themselves, but obviously, they are not. They are the growth agency, it is in their industry, so obviously, they've had to try uh, doing on the side of doing their day job as well. Yeah. But obviously, so it's just a feeling frustrated. They've tried several things and actually, uh, they know that they've got the opportunity, but they've just got no clue how to unlock it and then progress it. Down the last lock it. Exactly. And then after, which is obviously uh, after they've obviously, yeah, that was uh, done, our, uh, done our product. So obviously, which is confidence that obviously with actually their partnership with the growth agency, not a marketing agency, which starts to we don't actually class ourselves as a marketing agency. We do marketing, we do sales, we do service, but it's all part of a uh, it's all part of an aligned service that obviously helps push the business forward, not just the marketing efforts. Yeah, because definitely. obviously, if you push the marketing efforts forward, but the sales teams are performing, you won't be in any better situation. To be honest, uh, you might be a bit better, but obviously, it's not as well as obviously what you could do if obviously you can work with obviously something like a growth agency. Who are obviously uh, specialised in all areas of obviously uh, business, not just marketing. So uh, going through, oh, obviously, they're actually they're just glad that the responsibility is not just all on their shoulders yeah. to get this done, and uh, them to come up with every single idea to help push the business forward. So that's so, it. And yeah. feeling is what a lot of people run business on. Oh, yeah. They've got forecasts, they've got investments, they've yeah. got the know the knowledge. But feeling, how do I feel? And if you're frustrated, you've got to underperform. You know, why do you hire a solicitor? You should trust them to do your legal work. Why do you hire a bookkeeper or an accountant? You trust them to uh, do their uh, yeah, accounts right, and yeah. financial affairs. Why do you hire a growth agency or a marketing agency? Or why do you recruit a marketing director inside your business? Because you want to get that right. And that's how they feel. One of the biggest things I ask clients to think, what is the number one emotion that you feel in business? But that's the best, the, the most favored emotion. And a lot of people will say happiness or whatever, but you know what always comes out on top when you survey customers? Relief. Relief. And finally got it on. It's off my shoulders. I feel comfortable with the right decisions. Whether it's with us or another agency or the recruiter, the person internally, relief. I can give that over and let them do it right because I couldn't do it. So relief is what we see more than anything. Exactly. Yeah, that just wraps up the actual major part, obviously, in that before and after section. Underneath that, we've obviously got value uh, proposition. So obviously, this is where obviously, with obviously uh, uh, entrepreneur ready, like like actually uh, what we uh, mentioned earlier on the podcast, all personas obviously uh, need to be for an individual product or uh, uh, sorry, uh, individual service, and then for obviously that persona, 
and actually to help them through that service would be obviously the product obviously we would provide. So it's with Entrepreneur already, uh, that would obviously be our HubSpot strategy, followed by a game plan retainer. And obviously uh, what that does is, that just obviously helps him go through obviously, uh, exactly everything that we need here, and obviously helps him get to where he wants to get to. Yeah, so we've aligned a product which gives him a digital foundation and a series of campaigns, whether it's marketing, sales, service, what, to achieve the smart goals that he wants to do to, to, to move his needle up in that 3x, you know, and, and that's what it would be. And then finally, at the bottom, what we always ask you to do, um, uh, we, we can't actually play it for the no. podcast, but you will be able to play this when you sort of see this online. We ask the person in the business, when we build it for our clients, we ask the person in the business to record it in their own words. So our content team just pick up little nuances and little tonalities. And we get the CEO or the CMO yeah. to talk through the client. And then here, look, you can see there's a 20 minute video of us talking through this persona. So when our content creators put things together, our graphic designers put together, they've got a full brief. Um, and then ultimately a whole series of resources here that help them position our products and services into um, the content. So why do we build personas? So we can create better content, better lead generation. Do you think our content creators, are, you know, Rebecca, head of our content team, Gary, head of our direct response team, um, graphic designers, Jeff, who does our video editing, do you think that they're better positioned to put a campaign together that ramps up customer success and brings in business for us? Yeah, because look what we put into it. Look at the time that we put into it just to get that so they know everything about it and we put so much time into it. And it, Eddie, to me, feels like a child. It, it, it's, like, it, it's like another child that I had because I know so much about him and I can spot entrepreneur Eddie's at networking events, online inquiries, a mile away. And, he's, and, and we, we chose entrepreneur Eddie because he's such a, uh, he's, we've got a favorite view of him. Yeah. Nothing wrong with legal laws, automotive no. man, his influencer Isaacs, nothing with that. But Eddie's just such a, uh, you know, he's well, the first one we ever did at the full level. He's also a staple of obviously what we do. Yeah, he is a staple of what we do. And even though we've been creating personas for eight years, uh, you know, the first full blown persona is Eddie, who we did and, and continued to up. So he's our flagship model, isn't he? Is, he is, yes. If that makes sense. He is, yes. So obviously, uh, that is, uh, so obviously, uh, what we've got is uh, below uh, this actual video that you're watching now or, or obviously just listening to uh, on uh, the extra to listen player. We have actually got this and also a plan template underneath, yeah. obviously, for you to download. Obviously, you can print it off, you can write on it. You can actually just, obviously, just what you can do is you can start to build and start to go through the process yourself. And of course, obviously, you can download the template below and obviously start building your ultimate persona. And how to do that, guys, because we said you the how. What I recommend is don't get too many people involved to start with C suite, maybe a one from customer service, one from sales, and one from marketing. Uh, as, as a lead to get different perspectives. You sit them in a room, you go through it, and we start by saying, who is our number one customer? Who is the best person to deal with? Who is the most profitable? Who is less resistance? Who do get the best results within? You pick a customer up and you profile the questions that we're showing you against that person. Then you pick out people who you would like to acquire, <laughs> and then you see to get the blend. So you know, if, if, if we're Burger King and we want to go and become McDonald's, how do we become that? How do we aspire to be that? Who was the customer we aspire to be? Um, and then you do that. And then what you would do, you'd schedule interviews with these people, ring them up and say, hey, would you have 20 minutes? Um, I'm developing my personas. I really would appreciate a good interview. We won't share any personal details. It'll all be debadged. Yeah. We'll take bits out and we're making a Frankenstein. A bit out of this customer, a bit out of that customer. And then send them some cinema tickets, you know, a, a weekend away. Believe you me, even if it costs you a couple of hundred pounds or dollars to interview somebody or send them on a trip or something, um, you will get so much value out of this. Uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll learn from it really. And then, you know, interview, you know, uh, you, you, your prospects, even lost customers, why did they leave? So look, I'm not trying to get you back, I just want to make sure that it doesn't happen again. I love you back, but you know, I just want to do that. And again, send them a 25 pound Amazon card or a $50 Starbucks coffee card for the team or something, or you know, a Netflix subscription or something for a year. It doesn't matter, no lot presses the buttons. You know, and you, even if it costs you four or $500 a pound to get this right, you will save that in one day's loss or one week's loss advertising spend that you won't, you know, you get wrong at a later date. So it's definitely worth doing. So that's how you do it. 
C-suite, market, chief marketer or a contributor in marketing, selling sales, selling customer service, um, and you work on that. Once you've got it to a first shape after the interviews, then maybe bring other second tier uh, people in uh, in your business to add their, their view into it from that side. Again, yeah, so obviously uh, that is all down below for your uh, to do. But obviously, you, want to, uh, obviously uh, you have actually done that, obviously feel free to obviously send us that over, and obviously we'd we'll be more than happy to obviously uh, take a look at that. Yeah, we'll critique it. Yeah, yeah. great, yeah. great suggestion, Jay. Send it in, I'll be more than happy to give you a critique on it, ask you some questions and help you develop it. And if you join our community, it's totally free, community.1630.com. Um, you, you can ask questions in there of other people who are going through the same uh, stage as well, and not only we will help you, they will help you as well. Of course, and although uh, if you prefer to actually work with an agency on this, obviously uh, you can actually click the Let's Talk button up uh, and actually top right of this page, and actually should come book a call with obviously one of our team, obviously to help obviously uh, get you started on the road to obviously creating the ultimate perfect persona. Yeah, because we've given you the tools to do it, but if you don't want to do it, you'd just rather your time is better invested in your business and you want to work with an agency, you know, ask for me, Mike, I'm one of the lead structures here. I'd be more than happy to sit down, give you 30 minutes of your time, see if I can help you, get you on the right track and see if we can put a package together for you. If we can't, great. If not, then it's not the right fit. Then we'll, we'll try and point you in the right direction to help you along the way. Perfect. So uh, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in and actually learning more about how personas are essential to target and drive prospects to power your growth. If you do have any questions, leave us a comment below in the comment section or, or, or what you can do is uh, you can actually just send us a message uh, on social using the hashtags Go Inbound and uh, Inbound Podcast. Uh, and obviously uh, that's it from our side uh, today, Mike. So, uh, awesome. Have a great weekend and actually make sure that you go inbound and grow faster and we'll catch up with you in the next episode. Thanks for joining us today. You have been listening to the Inbound Podcast. To learn more about the show and access the resources we have mentioned in this podcast episode, simply visit theinboundpodcast.com. Visit the podcast section and subscribe to receive exclusive content. Thanks for listening and we look forward to catching up with you on our next episode to help you go inbound and grow faster. This podcast and associated material are published under copyright to Jamie Midgley. All rights reserved, no reproduction of this material is permitted.